Hey YouTube, it's Petey Two Finger here, and this is a repair tip about uh, flat cable, ribbon cable. I damaged this cable with a modification to my Zoom G3, which is a guitar multi effector. We'll talk about that later, but I just want to tell you when I realized what I had done, I really felt bad uh, because I love this thing and I was hoping to continue using it for many years because it's a wonderful tool for the guitar. And as far as tone and amps and all that, I, I, I found my path, and it's using this device. So I don't know if you can see uh, right in here. Right in there, you can see the pinholes in this cable. There we go. So, yes. What I did when I realized I had damaged the cable, I looked at it and there's number on it. Um, oh boy, here we go again with the... So yeah, there's numbering on it. And it says AWM 206-24-80C 60 volts VW slash 1. So I started in with that number. 20624 and that's that got me eventually to look at some Amazon sale pages and I ended up buying it from eBay and I got two pieces of it for a uh, dollar99 so in looking at this is what the auction says the auction says pitch 1.0 millimeter 22 pin 22p FFC slash FPC flexible flat cable 20624 80 Celsius 60 volts VW1 with 23 millimeter so between using my uh, Harbor Freight multimeter it's not a multimeter digital caliper for measuring stuff uh, and figuring out that the cable that this one was the one I bought was 10 millimeters longer the replacement cable was 80 millimeter and this cable is 70 so I didn't get the exact one but the way this sits it kind of bends itself over and I thought you know what it wouldn't hurt it having an additional I looked at it and it would fit inside the chassis so uh, if you're curious as to uh, replacing these cables all I can tell you is you want to start with that number, the 20624, or whatever number is on your cable. And the pitch is the width of each uh, of the copper traces. Uh, obviously, you could count, like in my case, it was a 22 pin, so we counted those pins. And you could use like a fine point Sharpie marker to mark off in fives or tens. If you have a hard time counting and your eyes start getting crossed up, you could even mark every other one. But once you figure out how many pins they are, the length of the cable, and you have that pitch defined, you pretty much nailed all the uh, mysteries that you need to nail down, the type of cable that you need to replace what you did. Now also, in a pinch, I would suppose you could alter one of these by taking a razor blade and cutting uh, let's say you, the people that had made the device customized it, or you just can't find the right cable, you could get a wider one and remove very carefully with a metal straight edge, surgical precision, but I wouldn't recommend monkeying around with it. Like I said, you, you should be able to look around and find the cable that you need. And as far as installing them, uh, you just pop them in. Now they do have some, you can see on this cable, that the the copper side I shouldn't say that copper I should say the contact side because it's not here are the contacts the contact sides are on the same side they make them with inverted contact sides so it's on one side on one end and on the other end it's on the other side so that's another variable that we want to make sure uh, so I want to be twisting our cable but yeah, it went from like this sinking feeling like, oh my God, what did I do? I wrecked my favorite toy. To a sweaty, 
couple of 10 minutes Googling around looking for this until when I had nailed it down, I felt relief. The thing worked, the G3, it worked. Uh, I actually gigged with it. Um, I didn't use it at the bar, but I used it at the, uh, we did an open mic. But I did, I did two outdoor music days with it while it had the wounded cable. And then today I replaced it and it it's actually works fine. So I took the replacement cable that I had, because I, I got two of them, and I taped that inside in case I make the same mistake again, which I won't do that. What I did was, this is the G3, and they wanted to give you a reason to buy the G5. So they crippled some of its functionality, meaning in order to find the patches going up and down through the banks, you can't hold down a button and have it scroll. You got to bat, 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 bat with your foot, and I didn't like that. Now, they did have a couple buttons up here which did that. If you held it down, it would scroll through the patches. So I soldered uh, wires in where those two switches were and ran the, that wire down here to the bottom and put in a press fit jack, a 3.5 mil. This is like a Walkman headphone type jack. So then I got a cable, uh, like a um, 20 millimeter, like a shorty cable with 90s. So at 90s into here, it goes over and 90s up into a little foot pedal with two switches. And I could just hold down my own switch and scroll through the pack, patches like I wanted to do. So when I put it together, that wire, it was kind of a thick piece of cable I used for this. Um, it was a three wire, like shielded wire, and it was kind of thick. And that ran across, I'm going to turn it sideways, we're going to turn it like this. It ran across this PCB cable, this data cable, I'll call it ribbon cable, connects in like this. And I had run the wire across it. And the pins were on this side here. This is really hard to explain. So it's like this. Here is a connector where it snaps in, and then it curls over this way. Well, there was pins sticking up, sharp pins from that connector, and the cable goes across it. And my cable, mod cable, laid across it, and then the roof is here, and I put the screws in, and it pressed my cable down onto that ribbon cable in through where those connectors are. And I didn't, you know, like, tighten it down. But I did feel it, and I looked, and I thought, oh, no, everything's going to be okay. This is just how it feels when you, when you button it up, because it was only a little bit of resistance. It didn't go all the way through. It did on one, two, three, four, five of them out of 22. It went all the way through. So it was enough pressure that I should have known something was wrong. But, hey, that's in the past. And you know what? How many mods and things I've buttoned up where I haven't had a problem? So, yeah, that's still really embarrassing, and it never should have happened. This is where, when you're modding, you'll see people. They go, yeah, I did the mod, and then this happened. I mean, this stuff is designed specifically. So when you're doing a mod, you want to really be careful of where you put the jack in and where you run the wires. And if people are recommending you do it a certain way, do it the way they recommend. I did it a different way. Everyone was do, doing this mod and putting the jack in on the back panel, and I was like, you know what, it's really tight back there. I know better, and I'm just going to run the wire around some long run because it's not an audio cable. It won't hum or anything, hopefully, you know. And like an idiot, of course, I damaged my flex cable. Flexible flat cable. So this is a flexi cable. They are available to replace. It's not that big of a deal. So if you damage one or if you need to replace yours, take a look on Amazon.com, take a look on eBay, and you'll probably be able to replace that. So that's my repair tip for you guys today. I'm going to be moving some patches around. Uh, what's going on is, you know, I had built this um, all-in-one. It's got a p power amp on the bottom floor and the top floor has a mixer and it's got all the jacks that I need to plug in. There's an mp3 player in it and there's a foot switch to for the play button so 
I can fill that MP3 player up with drum loops and then my stereo guitar signal plugs into one side of this box. My wife's stereo bass signal plugs into the other side. And then there's three speaker out jacks, two for like PA cabinets and one for a sub. And then there's a little low voltage mixer circuit on the top. So that's what we were using our powered mixer that I built that uses a class D amp board. I just mounted that board in there. So I didn't technically build everything like I hacked it together. And it works fine. I, I just wasn't really crazy about the mixer that we were using. And I wanted to get something that was just a little bit better because it runs on like six volts, that mixer, and it's just there's not much headroom in it. I mean, I can't hear anything wrong with it. There's no hiss. It sounds fantastic. We've had people compliment us on the setup, but um, the EQ, there's, there is no EQ on it. There's EQ on the amp board, and um, there's an EQ on the MP3 player that I'm always setting that to this one curve, and I would rather not go with the preset curve. I would rather have an EQ on a mixing board, a proper thing. So that's what I'm working on. I've got some enclosures that I'm working with, preparing for when the mixer arrives. I've been trying to get a mixer I can run on DC power uh, and get a deal on it and there's something called the Behringer 1002B and every time those come up they're like $125 new every time up that co comes up for an auction people just keep up bidding and up bidding and up bidding because it's summertime and they're going to do an outdoor gig so uh, those just keep getting up bid to where the price is close enough to what it would be new for me not to want to buy a used and buying a used board is iffy so there was a bunch of flaky people. One guy, I'm emailing and emailing and emailing and emailing and emailing him, and he won't answer because I really wanted what he had. And then, of course, the day I order something and pay $15 shipping on it, he emails me back the next day. We're available Monday through Friday. I've been emailing you, dude. You, If you put something up on on Craigslist you gotta answer your email you gotta check your spam folder you know so unbelievable but pet peeve but so we'll have that more complicated thing that probably isn't gonna matter at all it already sounds really hot at like the the EQ on the drums is like really trebly it's almost too much I think on that preset curve so I'll probably be able to tone it down a little bit and balance the frequencies a little better with this is the ultimate uh, end result of it is we've got a few of these sets of videos that are up where the backing tracks are really sizzly on the high end and that's not good. So anyway, that's what I'm working on. I've got these germanium pedals that are were just an unbelievable pain in the neck. Uh, I've got to do those at some point. I like ordered all that stuff and just like forgot about that. I've got a pedal that I need to order the PCB that was a screw up that the guy isn't restocking it for months. And then I want to do a diesel V4 is what I want to do for no other purpose than just something to do. And with money being tight, it's like, no, you've got enough on your plate to worry about that thing for right now. So that's kind of what's going on. I, we went out uh, <clears throat> this weekend and did a remote jam and had a ground wire break. The people walk up, oh, you're going to make music? I just had some shoulder surgery and I'm, I'm on Valium, this old guy. And I'm like, yeah. And Donna's like, I don't think that thing's working. So then I'm going to the car because there's a USB port in the car and the stupid uh, USB soldering iron that I ordered from eBay doesn't work. So I had to fix that today, and there's just a bunch, there's a list of stuff I got to do. And I, you know what, I want to make these patches nice. I've got this, this thing's still kind of like half set up for the family band, and we're not playing with the kids anymore. We get together with them like two times a year, four times a year. So it shouldn't hog up my main thing. We, we, what happened was both my wife and I forgot our paperwork. This last time we went out kind of last minute, didn't really, you know, we got, we got 
we got lazy and neither one of us had any lists or paperwork and usually I'll have a list that has the song list on it in order and then it tells me the corresponding patches in my multi effector because I use two multi effects and I use multiple patches on the same multiple songs for the same patch so yeah it was a little bit touch and go and it was so unbelievably humid I was just pouring sweat pouring sweat two couples came and uh, wanted to talk you know and that couple that came at the end of the night I we could have played maybe four more songs and we were unable to because they wanted to talk she wanted him to get a job as a drummer she kept saying play him on the phone he's a good drummer and I'm like we like I can't you're not gonna get any money from me that's I work very hard so we don't have a drummer you know he was all interested and wanted to exchange Facebook and all the stuff and I was telling him about the acid casualty series because he's this guy likes psychedelic rock uh, so I was telling him I did this series of videos called acid casualties that people really responded well to and he would enjoy them. So he was all interested and I was telling him about it and he was learning stuff he hadn't heard. He had only heard of Sid Barrett. And, uh, but he knew who Peter Green was, he knew that song. So I'm telling him about this series and then the next day I find him, he, he told me how to find him. So I find him and I send him all the links to the stuff and then don't hear anything back. So yeah, that's just how people are, you know, some some people some people anyway it's not going to bother me i mean it's his loss if he doesn't watch the acid casualty series uh, i got my own thing going on and i love doing it uh, he was showing me video of his band and i just no comment no comment they had a female singer they were doing rush working man And uh, they played the uh, um, Janis Joplin song, Bobby McGee, which, I mean, uh, the whole female singer thing, I, no comment on that. That whole cover band scene, no comment. I can't say anything about it. I did it. It's, it's not for me. It's not for me. And those... I find most of the time when I'm talking to people online who really have an attitude about gear and they really want to be confrontational about anything that isn't a tube amp and a Les Paul, those are always the cover band people. The people that are using other stuff, modeling, playing through headphones, playing through PA speakers, anything but a real expensive tube amp. Those are all people that write original music. Whether it be any good or any bad doesn't matter to me. I'd rather hear that than somebody trying to play. I'll give you an example, Red Barchetta by Rush. I was in a band, they picked that song, and the guy used to always laugh because it would be a challenge for the singer. Well, nobody could play it. Nobody could play that song. Rush probably can't even play that song. They could play it when they were at their peak for, you know, two years they were able to play that song. It's so unbelievably technical to play. <laughs> All right, you guys, this video is getting long. I'm going to cut you loose. Peace.